do the evacuation first, emergency evacuation announcement. Uh, we don't expect any um, fire alarm tonight. Should we be required to evacuate the building, would you please leave the building by the nearest available exit to the chamber? Our assembly point will be in the public car park in, at the side of the civic suite. Please do not delay your evacuation to collect any belongings. Please do not return to the building until given permission to do it by the council staff. Please note that this meeting will be audio recorded and can we make sure our phones were either turned off or on silent. Thank you. <coughs> right. Apologies for absence. I have Councillor Smith and he's been substituted by Mike Luther Skill and Councillor Mrs. D. Hoy, who's been substituted by Councillor Mrs. C. Mason. Is there any more? Uh, what what about it? <coughs> Councillor Mrs. Diane Hoy is actually absent. She's not, I do apologise. <laughs> She's going to be substituted. <laughs> but she is going to be substituted yes. by yeah. because you will not be able to stay <coughs> just yet. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No members attending. There is. Oh, Mr. Councillor Mrs. Councillor Mrs. Hoy. Thank you. Can we agree the minutes of the meeting held on the 28th of June 2018? Yeah. Agree. Agreed. Thank you. To receive declarations of interest. Um, right. Mr. Chairman, uh, non curious, sorry, Captain White, non curious, I'm the County Councillor for Holbridge and Hockney. Thank you. Thank you. On previous advice from the legal officer, I'll, I'll speak for Councillor Mrs. White for me because she's no microphone. Um, uh, disclosable pecuniary interest on account of we own property that backs onto the development. We are allowed to speak as visiting members, but then we have to leave the room once the debate starts. Right, thank you very much. We're here tonight for a planning motion of 18 stroke 00. 135 stroke REM, land between Windermere Avenue, Maylands Land and Lower Road, Colbridge. Let's consider the application. I am now going to put this over to Mike Shanks. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application site, just to familiarise members, relates to the site of Mallins Farm there on the western edge of Holbridge, um, formerly uh, equine use and grazing land. You'll see Ferry Road here to get fair into the lower road which remains as part in the corner, window mid avenue at the top of the site. If we can jump to the uh, SCR location plan, oh, it doesn't, it's just okay, yeah, if we can jump to the SCR. Um, there, Chairman, is the allocations extract from your local plan, uh, your allocations plan. Members will recall that this released that area of land in the two shades from the green belt, and this is an adopted current document <coughs> which took that land as an extension of the existing Holbridge settlement. If we could jump to the outline concept, um, <coughs> members will see from the history set out in the report that planning permission was granted in outline. For the area edge red, you'll see from the allocation that's the previous slide, there's a pocket of a couple of parcels of land up there which are part of the release but they're not part of this application site or this consent. They're actually, in effect, they work in addition to. So this application that was granted in outline did not include those parcels in the top north uh, west corner. If we can jump to the uh, density plan. Um, Chairman, this was a, uh, an indication plan in the outline, the green outline stage, where it showed the upper uh, portions onto uh, Windermere Avenue would be probably at say two storey and a relatively lower density with the rest of the site, a mixture of densities and heights, but particularly the central part would be allowable up to three storeys. So three storeys in the outline did permit an element or designs of three storey in that outline consent. If we can jump to the current application site plan, please, Rob. Members, this is the uh, application that's before you tonight. It is in detail or reserve matters if that works as the second half of a permission. When you have an outline granted, it's the first half, and then these kind of reserve matters, these details, they come along as a second half, making a complete whole in a permission. And you'll see that it shows a detailed layout of the site, broadly following the parameters that were laid down by the outline. Um, it excludes the parcel of land at the top that I was referring to. And you'll see it also excludes this site here. There's a, there's a lone bungalow standing in the middle of the site that isn't part 
of the application site. Unusually, perhaps, but it goes round, um, the development proposed goes round that retained bungalow. You'll also see it retains the farmhouse building there, but that is part of the application site itself. So there's two buildings retain the existing bungalow, which all the development goes round, and the <coughs> farmhouse, which is uh, part of um, the layout and the considerations. Now, uh, just off the base of the map, the access uh, comes in off Holbridge Road. The access has already been agreed at outline stage. The access elements in this application are the various plots and the minutia that run through the scheme as a whole. The development is based around three character areas, a, a, parkland, quarter, a parkland quarter at this lower part of the site, moving on to uh, an urban uh, village core in the middle, higher density, and then at the top, what is called the um, northern quarter. You'll see from the outline, and also included in this, there's an access to Malin's Lane that would serve the site and give permeability for vehicles into the uh, settlement. But there's also a number of points where pedestrian and cycle access could also enter the uh, development. If we can jump to the street scene A, please, Rob. <coughs> Members will see that this top um, view here is a view of, of this section of the parkland quarter on the crescent shaped part of the road. Then we move to this bottom uh, view which is taken to this part, slightly different uh, setting, at least as you see on the uh, plan layout. And this bottom image is a view looking there outwards onto the buffer strip between existing development and the edge of the proposed development. If we jump to the second screen, Rob. This one shows uh, two of the flatted buildings um, in, in this part here. Uh, then we move to uh, another view that's shown through through to here and then these last two are these views here with the development again looking on the outside <coughs> if we could jump to the visualization please rob members will see that the uh, image this would be on entry into the site the parkland that was at the base this is coming in off holbridge road this is an artist's impression of how as you enter the development the scheme would look now a concern that we have is that you ask you to note because we'll turn back in a moment to the um, layout plan but just take a mental note and pause on the gaps between these buildings here nicely detached perhaps in some circumstances lots of off-street parking and, and garages but you'll have seen from the officer report that there is concern on that in a um, uh, an environmental urban design context in that this crescent offers a tremendous opportunity to get an attractive built frontage, still maintaining parking designs and, and standards and getting the vehicles off street. But in urban design terms, these gaps should largely be avoided in this setting. Now, um, if we can go back to the layout, please, Rob. Uh, nine, sorry. <coughs> it's perhaps a little bit dropped to the bottom, that's it. Perhaps, I don't know if you can zoom in a bit on the bottom part. <coughs> it's probably worth members noting that the gap, I say that's great. These, if you look at that detail, for instance, three parking bay widths and then a larger garage at the back, and all of these doubles, it's a great shame that that gapage through there, nicely detached as they may be in some preferences, but in a town planning and an urban design sense, there's a a great opportunity to create something really attractive along there, better than this, to the extent that officers feel that the application should be refused. That's not the sole reason, but just while we're on that detail, that's that's one of the features that uh, led to the recommendation that we had. Um, now, there are other issues about the extent of car-dominated layouts like you see here, um, and that you will have seen that in the body of the report there are two comments from the county's urban designer, quite extensive comments, that show that there's a lot of criticism that firstly didn't, didn't result in a conclusion, but officers read into that that there was definite concerns and asked our colleagues at county to clarify that. And they brought forth a, a second comment that's also before you in the report. And again, is very critical, but concluded actually that there was no objection. Now, we've had further discussions with our colleagues on this point and are confident that the recommendation we brought to you on the, uh, on the report papers that you've seen 
Um, it amounts to uh, objections on, on the urban design. There's a number of criticisms against other buildings, the lack of detail in those, and a, a fundamental uh, reason that the character you saw on those street views, and I accept they are isolated views of parts of the development, it's very difficult actually to tell one street from another. And what there really needs in this scheme is for those character areas, the, the parkland quarter, the village court, and the northern uh, quarter to be reinforced by better architectural detailing between those different areas. Otherwise, what you get is, is a mass of housing, some 500 houses that broadly look the same, give or take a few different colored bricks and tiles, okay? So there is a, what I haven't mentioned, a, probably one of the best landscaping schemes through this, okay? But we think that the developer has rather relied on the landscaping to achieve the character, whereas we're saying you need uh, the design of the buildings to complement that. <coughs> now you'll see also the second strand of the recommendation you had was to do with the National Space Standards. Appendix 1 to your report cites that some 43% of the buildings proposed would not meet the criteria for floor spaces, covered areas, size of some of the bedrooms, and that offices such a significant failure cannot accept that shortfall. Now, we, you saw when the report and the agenda was published to you that um, there was the uh, recommendation to refuse. That we have also today received a letter from the um, Holbridge Residents Association. There's several pages, some six pages to this, but if I, I just give you the highlight points. that um, The first point, they feel that the infrastructure issues are paramount and good reasons for refusal. Um, and add that we agree with the council's recommendation, at least that was published uh, from officers a while ago, uh, and that those reasons are holding within planning law. Um, they agree with the urban designers' comments that I've alluded to, and the general layout lacks substance, um, and that there should be alternative options. There are outstanding uh, conditions awaiting discharge on a design brief. Now that point, actually, Chairman, does not stop the applicant bringing in a wholesale scheme like you see before you tonight. The purpose of that condition, or those two conditions, is should they break the site up into phases and sell them off to different developers, and those developers come back wanting to do their own thing, there needs to be a consistency in architectural treatment where they're, they're given license to be innovative and imaginative, but a consistency so that it fits together. And that's the purpose of those conditions. For a large application given all in one vote, you perhaps don't need that because you've got the whole scheme, what it would look like, in, in, one, in one bite. The um, association says that they suggest there should be security screen uh, around the edges of the site to protect the immunity and the um, security of residents who have access to the site. Um, they ask the question that 35% of affordable homes remain as two-storey dwellings. Um, under the lifetime homes criteria, they acknowledge that, that although no longer part of planning, is within uh, building regs. Um, they also uh, concern the Ordnance Survey site boundary. They, they cite that part of the site um, is within Rorath and the remainder within Holbridge, and that should be distinct in the layout. Um, they consider that the scheme is overdevelopment, especially taking into account the reduced area of open space in the northwest corner, which is 15% smaller. They also state concern that the roadways do not meet the Essex design guide, um, and that frontages are uh, on the limit of 10 metres, uh, or should be on the limit of 10 metres. Um, they said that the sewage connections between old and new and the collection dispersal criteria should be clarified. They question what plans for the improvement of Watery Lane exist. Well, that's largely in the uh, remit of the outline condition and any discharge of, of conditions. The developer isn't required at this detailed stage to do this layout to submit details for the off-site stuff for you. Um, they suggest that there should be a review of the contribution. <coughs> Um, and they ask that how residents hunting uh, unadopted roads and adopted roads, how their properties will be safeguarded against disruptive and progressive construction works, and whether any guarantees can be given to the community, um, as they say that some 1,475 properties will be affected by the development over five to six years. 
they expressed concerns at the hazardous nature of the existing telecommunications masts. Um, they understand from the applicant to be uh, relocated elsewhere. Um, the object to three-storey buildings, which they regard as totally unacceptable on the grounds of separating the village to this part of the development. Um, they say that the parking provision is inadequate for, for the site and not enough visitor parking. Um, they say that the road frontages um, contravene the 45 degree rule for overshadowing and do not meet the requirements of the Essex Design Guide. Uh, and that a majority of affordable housing had plots with car parking against the highway boundary, which they say goes against the visual impact. Um, they asked whether Mallion's Lane will be used for traffic whilst the roundabout is being constructed, which I take to be the entrance to the site. Um, the ground working activities will ensure major disruption, and they uh, asked for what activities would minimise surface water flooding um, and eradicating the blue clay as the flood water disposal into ponds and attenuation tanks. Um, they believe a contract manager will be better placed to deal with these pertinent issues. Um, they asked for details of the adoption agreement to do with angling water for foul drainage and the catchment area of Madden's Lane, an assessment of the details of the archaeological, archaeological excavations. To help members, we have had details of that submitted, but that's discharge of conditions rather to the outline rather than these um, details on the um, detailed planning application. Um, in regard to flood risk, they argue that the developer must demonstrate that they have arranged approval before any environmental works are carried out and that the Secretary of State must be notified of the flood risk assessment compliance. Um, it should be noted that Beaches Brook is affected by tidal blocking as the outfall of Beaches Brook 1 to 3 outfalls before being affected by tidal surges. Uh, lastly, <coughs> the original buffer zones were to have underground attenuation tanks, but they say that the layout, which is part of the landscaping, now sh shows above ground attenuation basins. Member would have seen in the past that the use of those areas when they're dry as open recreational space is usually accepted. What happens to those basins is when there is excessive rain, then they fill because they're relatively shallow and allow the uh, <coughs> rainfall to percolate away in dry periods at an acceptable rate where they don't overburden uh, the system. They criticise the, the garden areas and the question whether the uh, layout complies with the council standards and the inadequacy of the firefighting positions uh, shown on the um, private access drives. Lastly, the front elevations to the two and a half storey to only show proposed flat roof dormers, um, which they say is contrary to the council's policy. Now, to help members with that, members will have seen that particularly on one of the delegated applications we get for um, pitched roof dormers or flat roof dormers, a view has to be taken on the character of the street and where you would have seen in our reports on delegated applications where there are uh, streets with quite a strong element of flat roof front dormers it would be unreasonable for a council to refuse a pitch roof or to insist on pitch roof we perhaps wouldn't stop an applicant wishing to put pitch roof in but it's all down to whether it's reasonable given the presence of a strong character of flat roof dormers to, to impose that pitch roof design because that's your guidance and your policy now in this case, in this layout, the developer is creating areas of character of buildings, right from the, the origins, that are characteristic of flat-roofed dorms. The um, members will also see from the addendum chairman that there are um, outstanding comments from Holbrook's Paris Council, which are listed there. There is the Comments of Essex Railways Association, and also from the County Council's Historic Buildings and Conservation Sites. And that brings me to a change in the officer recommendation. We'll also see on the addendum there's a letter from the applicants, item one on the addendum, which follows the publication of the officer report and the recommendation that we had to refuse. And the applicants have met with us on Tuesday this week, and they have asked for a deferment so that they can submit uh, alternative plans to us to address the urban design issues on the design and layout that I've, I've gone through in this presentation. You'll also see that uh, the second strand of officers' concerns that mounted to refusal, which is on the national space standards, 
the applicants provided with us Tuesday afternoon a council's opinion, a barrister's opinion, that suggests that the uh, substance of that is misplaced and that uh, there would be no grounds in refusing on that line. Now, given that we've had that on Tuesday, there isn't time in, in officer's view to be able to consider that and report that to you. you. You have our view prior to that clearly set out, but it would be prudent to give the applicant time, give us the applicant time to revise the urban design issues and for the officers to go away and research the validity of the applicant's claim on the, urban, on the uh, space standards. And to that end, Chairman, the recommendation is that members uh, defer the application um, and allow us to receive the revisions from the applicant, consult and consider on those, and also to consider the point made by the applicant with regard to the uh, misuse in their view, although not currently shared by officers, on how their space standards have been applied. Um, and that, that's the new chairman that officers are saying we could defer the application tonight to give us that time for those uh, improvements to the application. Thank you, Um We've got two points. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. There's no nothing mentioned for uh, comments. No, sorry, sir. There's no comments from the member of public. Only members of the development. Thank you. We have two. Uh, well, we've got three speakers. We've got three speakers, right? I've had two. Sorry. We've got uh, Councillor Angelina Murray from Holbridge Parish Council, we'd like to come up to Angelina, please. Thank you. We've got five minutes, and we'll begin. And you'll have, I'll give you a minute at the end. Okay. You've got one minute to go. Thank you. Holbridge Parish Council have numerous meetings with David Wilson. We have discussed and raised several concerns which has resulted in some enhancements being made to the design. We have also agreed a proposal for the District Council to consider in respect to the Section 106 agreement regarding the youth facility. Furthermore, we have had consultations with residents who have viewed the plans and provided us with their comments, which we as members took into consideration before formalising our decision and response. Unfortunately, our original response was not included within the report submitted to the Development Committee, but note that they are now part of an addendum. In light of the current report, it appears that it does not include new and revised material information. Therefore, we would like the Development Committee to consider that the reserve factors is deferred to a later date, so allowing time for revisions to be made with input from all relevant parties, including ourselves. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. The next speaker we've got is Mr. Wayne Houghton. David Baron Holmes, Head of Planning, please. Just so you reply, you have five minutes, and we'll give you a minute to uh, let you know what's going on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. Good evening, members and members of the public. My name is Ray Houghton, Head of Planning at Barrett David Wilson Homes, Eastern Counties, based in Chelmsford. As stated in the officer's report, the principle of development has been established for 500 dwellings at uh, this strategic gateway location. David Wilson Homes now owns the site of this allocation. The application is the culmination of a detailed discussion with planning, design, landscaping, highways, and members of the and other stakeholders, including members, Coldbridge Parish Council, and the non strategy stakeholders, such as the Coldbridge Residents Association. The proposal has been informed and has evolved by this engagement process, but we accept more needs to be done. As discussed at our recent meeting with Mike Strengths and Essex Place Services, the design officer, we wish to work closely to directly and positively address these concerns relating to urban design. 
I note that uh, page 6.17 of the officer's report uh, refers to a letter dated uh, 8th of May from Mark Francois. Um, this is being reproduced, which relates solely to the roundabouts provision and the driveway. These are matters which were addressed at, by this very same committee on the 25th of May. We were grateful to the uh, MP for what we met on the 10th of May and where we stated the legally obliged, uh, we are legally obliged to construct and deliver both roundabouts within the prescribed timescale. The lower road roundabout and bus lay-by approved that the committee will be delivered before dwellings are occupied. The Warworth Lane Holbridge Road roundabout to the south has to be delivered by the 50th occupation of our dwellings. As members will recall, the Wilder Path Commission was removed at the same planning committee. <coughs> Therefore, it is considered that the MP's comments do not relate to the current reserve matters application, and my email to the MP confirms these points, and the matter was successfully concluded. Noteworthy is that no objection has been made by ECC Highways. The impacts of the proposal on the highways and the transportation was considered acceptable as a grant of outline consent. Further, ECC Flood Risk and Water Management received and reviewed the flood risk uh, assessment and the surface water drainage strategy and raised no objection. Likewise, no objections have been received from ECC archaeology or historic buildings. Portrait District Council's housing strategy team also support the proposal on the basis that it will, quote, provide a good mix of properties that meet the current housing needs in the district, unquote. This is echoed by the Preferred Housing Association builder, Ellen Q, who uh, the registered provider, who by proposing the group reviewed the affordable housing and fully assessed it on the basis of the size proposed and wished to deliver this much needed affordable housing for local people. In the officer's addendum, it is noted that Holbridge Parish Council raises no objection, subject to some design issues which we, as mentioned before, would like to address in our ongoing discussions with all the parties. Staying with the addendum, given the committee's aforementioned approval of the condition relating to the bridle way, uh, comments on the Essex Bridle Way Associations are no longer reasonably applied to this proposal. Turning uh, to the space standards, it would be, it should be noted that unlike recent approvals from house builders, as well as house builders in the district, including the local area, there is no uh, express condition on the outline approval for this uh, consent. The exception being regarding space standards is the requirement that 3% of the dwellings are wheelchair accessible <coughs> and this we comply with. The principle of development is established for the quantum of development proposed and therefore ex the accepted, we accept that this is the right location for this type of, of uh, development. One minute but we would like to continue to work with all parties, including members of the public, the HRA, the Parish Council, and of course, a, a place services and the district, to establish that the right homes are also delivered. In light of the QC's advice on this matter and other matters relating to design, members are respectfully asked to defer this application. Thank you. Thank you. Our third speaker um, for this is Brian Carlton, uh, Chairman of the Holbridge Residents Association. And he's an objector. Again, so you have five minutes and we'll let you know when there's a minute to go. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Holbridge Community thanks the Arctic RDC for making note of all the issues we submitted since 2013, now included in the issues stated in your Planning Officer's Report. A definitive answer was not received from part of why RDC have accepted a reserve matter application when he submitted an application with a charge of conditions 6 and 7 imposed on the outline approval states that prior to any reserve matter application, both these conditions should be agreed and approved in writing. The RDC website states pending consideration. 
buffer zone. Security screening for long all properties facing the site was suggested the PDW did not respond. Madden's Lane with a width of four and a half metres is not acceptable as a feeder road or for use by site traffic and will cause major upheaval for the residents. Essex Design Guide suggests that the width must be 5.5 metres. HRA suggests that a temporary road be built to alleviate congestion. <coughs> BDW informed us that ECC and highways considered the road satisfactory for use. Water Lane improvements including storm and surface water collection, drainage dispersal and signage is needed. The filter lane into Water Lane is not an improvement as the traffic turns right anyway. The, pla the planning inspector suggested that RDC ECC discuss ways of widening this lane to accept the amount of traffic which will increase perhaps the financial constraints of restraining improvements. Bus stop. The proposed repositioning of bus stop will cause further congestion and disruption. Infrastructure. BDW should, should review their con contribution towards existing infrastructure which requires substantial upgrading. We are happy to consult on funding issues. ECC flood and water management insist on compliance with common law if the drainage scheme proposes to discharge into an off-site ditch pipe. Downstream repairing landowners have not been consulted. This is unacceptable. Attenuation ponds are not acceptable health and safety rules. The current methods of delivery must comply with the surface water management systems. The boundary line dividing Holbridge and Broader Parish Council with two thirds and one third properties located respectively. ECC requests that the boundary line should be retained. We requested information on council tax collection. Flood risk. HRA are not convinced that flood risk is eliminated. Manning's farm site has a large floodplain area and all surface water drainage systems will have to comply with Essex County Council's SUDS schemes for major developments. Fire services, firefighting appliances position are not acceptable on access driveways. Housing, we object to three-storey buildings on the grounds that they separate the village from the existing conurbation, which are predominantly one and two-storey buildings. We have noted that the number of plots contravene the 45 degree rule for overshadowing and some back in, into site distances of 13.5 metres. We do not comply with the Essex Design Guide. Existing telephone communication models are hazardous to the community. HRA requested proposals to remove all the masks. They present a health hazard and are totally unacceptable. Eradicating blue clay. BEW promised to provide a full geophysical site investigation report. That opportunity was lost, especially as we feel they're beginning to feel comfortable with construction, constructive dialogue. Access to site. BDW were unable to ensure that the six gates, that, six gates and access points will not be used by the tra for traffic for access in those purposes. A review is urgently required. The public right of way located on Valens Lane into the site under application 18001244 is reported that the media of the RDC are agreeing to its removal. This surely is against the planning bylaws and should not be approved. HRA requests all the above issues are be included for refusal. Having considered RDC points of refusal, we agree with the terms of refusal and to add the important issues HRA have stated along allowing RDC confidence and should refuse to offer a deferral of the application. This refu refusal presents ample opportunities to find more sensible alternatives and to take consultation more seriously with professional groups such as HRA. HRA remind RDC and PDA that this chaos will run for longer than six years. Thank you. Thank you. Members, 
that a majority of the social housing design are actually the reason why they, the space standards are so poor. Virtually all of the social housing failed to meet space standards. Um, which is appalling. Um, the social housing itself is not pepper potted in accordance with policy, but it's made in the three story blocks plus some house types, which are clustered together rather than pepper potted. Um, in addition, social housing is supposed to be tenure blind. It says in the report it will be tenure blind. However, social housing on this site is of, is of one or, or of particular types. The social housing type, property types are only used in social housing terms. None of the social housing property types will be seen in private sales. Therefore, I cannot see that they are tenure blind. It just isn't possible. Um, amenity space, I think it's been mentioned in the office report and it was declared acceptable. But there's a failure to provide adequate space for the block comprising units 318 to 330. It's suggested that because it's close to the open space, this is acceptable, but this is a block of one and two bedroom flats. There's, there will presumably be young children there, and it, it seems that they, how can they enjoy the open space? There, there's no privacy for them, so I think this is a, a, a clear problem for this block. Yes, there is open space, but there should be an amenity space specific for the people living in that block. Moving on, I, I do not agree that the boundary treatment is good enough with the property lines Elm Grove and the Northern Park site having minimal green space between the end of their gardens and the new development. Even where it's provided, the distance is at the maximum is not good enough. I think it's about 25 metres. It sounds substantial, but actually it's the length of a garden. Not a new house garden, but maybe an older house garden. The, um, the full, oh, I won't say that bit, it, it's previously been discussed that when the original application was being put to that there was an indication that perhaps the parkland would be moved between the new development and the old development of Holbridge to provide a, a public space available for all. Um, that hasn't happened and I think that the, the um, amenity space should be increased. Um, as I said, to, to try and meet all the issues I have to take some time, I think I've dealt with most of it. I do not want to repeat what other people have said, such as Mr. <coughs> Carlton and other members. Thank, Thank you. you. to also include ward councillors who have had representation for young people on what is actually wanted. The reason I'm raising this is because the developers do not want any new city on that site. Now in 2013, this council went out and they asked young people what they wanted on that site. And what they asked for was a skate park. And the developers are saying they don't want no new facilities on that site. So, Chairman, could you just explain, does that mean there's not going to be any children on that site? Right, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Your comments have been noted. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you but I do have some very, very strong concerns regarding uh, providing a bridleway within the site. We had um, 
this application comes before us a little while ago uh, when we asked for a right of way that was um, going to be presented and it was rejected. Um, I do feel very strongly that we had walkers, we had uh, cyclists, and we had um, people who were on horses. And I feel very strongly in the, in the, on the written addendum where it says, our response relates pri primarily to the application to remove the condition to provide a borrowed way within the site of the prize part of the commission. And it says, we strongly, uh, we strongly object to the removal of the condition. And I would like, the, when this goes to the officers and they look at this, I'd like the officer to um, look at this with the um, David Wilson Homes once again to provide some sort of a um, side way cyclists and for the walkers uh, within this within this area. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Just on that, that point, um, members will recur. I think it was in the meeting at the end of May that an application came before you that the applicants there was a condition on the outright consent and one of the mechanisms in planning law allows an applicant to make an application to revoke or change a condition. And there were two conditions that night. One that referred to the roundabout and the bus lay-by, if you recall. The other one was that the applicant not be obliged to provide the bridal, bridal path that was a condition to the consent. And if you recall also, the Highways Authority specifically objected to that and members debated that. And then following a vote, the uh, application to remove the condition was approved. So now as part of the planning law, that condition is no longer for the applicant to comply with. And then the same members considered the issues, um, they had the advice of the highway authority, they took a vote and that condition uh, was removed as a result of that. Now that, that is a matter of record now, the applicant does no longer have to uh, apply with that condition to provide the right of way. Um, Mr. Stifler, Councillor Stifler. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've listened, listened strongly to the argument here for deferral, and I think that's probably going to be the, the best option. Uh, I'll pick up on the drive-away side of things. Uh, I think the developer or the agent here this evening is going to hear an awful lot um, of concerns and issues that are going to be rise, raised by other members. And although it's not a condition of the uh, uh, application and has been removed from the previous one, I still think there's perhaps a moral suggestion that perhaps they should reconsider that. I, for example, was at Belfair's Woods today, and there's walkways, there is footpaths, there is a golf course, there is cycleways, all within that area, with very minimal maintenance required, and I don't see why that, that couldn't possibly be the same here in the sub. So I would call upon the developer to perhaps reconsider that, and I think there is an opportunity. I think the development, as uh, another member has already mentioned, is perhaps an off-the-peg style development and slotted in. Um, it needs an awful lot of work to come back to us before um, I'd be happy to agree to it. Um, there's an awful lot of bits and pieces, some of it is quite minor, some of it is more serious. But I think they need to take this opportunity that's going to be given to them to work with the parish, to work with the Residents Association, to work with the District Council, uh, and to make this a real premier site um, right across the whole, the whole area. I think there's an opportunity there that they're going to miss if they're not careful. Thank you. That was nice to <laughs> Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, obviously, as a war vendor, I've got lots of um, issues around this. Um, I'm not sure whether, whether you want me to bring them all together as one or to bring them all in tranches. Bring them as one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> with the, um, can I ask Mr. Strokes to explain um, if the, um, the decision was for refusal? without taking uh, legal advice, what would be the effect on what potentially the effect on that? Um, and related to that, um, what I'd like to do is seek assurance from council officers that we will instruct Queen's Council, as the developer has, um, 
because of the equivalence. I, sp I spoke to Mr. Irvin, and I know that we don't actually employ uh, QC, so I was looking for assurance that we would spend the money to do that. That's my first question. Thank you. Chairman, dealing with the second question first, that has been talked about, I think we've heard from above that if that's what it takes, we can, we can go to council. But dealing with the more serious point, that if members were to refuse without taking that advice, if it comes to that, it's, it's not uncommon for councils and developers to battle over a refused plan, which is bread and butter to us. But the appeal system looks at how reasonable you were in reaching your decision, whether your reasons were right, particularly whether you behaved well. And the discipline they bring to that behaviour is the award of costs. Now, none of us have got a crystal ball, but it's quite likely that as the applicant has offered an opportunity, forget the urban design revisions for a moment, but they've offered an opportunity to both officers and members to rethink the advice that we've given you on the application of the space standards. And they've provided a, a council's advice. Uh, that's pretty serious in its own right. And they've given us an opportunity to defer the application to perhaps seek our own council's advice and to rethink the grounding that. If you didn't do so, if you didn't take that opportunity and you decided perhaps to deny, no, we refuse on space standards or, or something, the developer would have to go into an appeal potentially and defend their position. And if an inspector finds that the council could have avoided that aspect of an appeal by having sought its own advice, taken the opportunity, then that element of the appeal would have been unreasonable. It gets a little perverse perhaps that the, the, the the inspector could actually agree with you perhaps at the end of the day and refuse permission, but he could award costs against you for acting behaved unreasonably and not trying to sort it out. So that's why we're saying to you that there's an opportunity um, put forward by the applicant, will be late in the day, too late for us to give it the consideration it deserves, and that by deferring we could go away, possibly um, get our own council's view, but most definitely research all the background to it, and Mr. Thomas may come in on this because he's a bit of an expert on space standards, um, but it would put you in a better position uh, when this application returns, and whatever recommendation we give you, whether we stick with that side of the recommendation we're given, in other words, we say we're still right, or whether we find the need to revise our advice to you. At the moment, I'm slightly unnerved, and I think it's worth deferring the application to make sure so that we have the quality advice that, that you need. I don't know if Mr. Thomas would add to that. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, I probably wouldn't add anything further at this stage because obviously it's something we need to take away and research, but I, I would only say that at the moment the council's position is as it was that the space station <coughs> should apply, but obviously we need to, and we would prefer to go away and research it and take an uh, opinion of council if necessary. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, what I'd like to do is pick up um, points that have been made by Holbrook's Residents Association and Councillor Michael Hoy, one, and also from the Parish Council as well, um, which is the, the, the buffer, the green buffer for the properties that uh, have their boundaries onto the, the, the site. Um, it seems to me that these are inconsistently applied, so some uh, properties have got much less buffer than others. And what I propose is that actually all of the properties have the same buffer. Um, and not only that, but to extend it up to Harrison Gardens and to Ambleside Gardens as well, which uh, bound onto the property. So that's the first thing. The, um, the next point relates to the boundary issue raised by Mr. Carlton. Um, now, I know that within planning law, you can actually do um, give planning permission for developments across boundaries. The question I've got though is how will that aid integration if we've got one half of the community in Broadwith Parish Council and the other half in Holbridge Parish Council? It, it's the thought of the integration, how that's actually going to work. Thank you, Chairman. Um, if I deal with the buffer issue first, I'll just ask members to ponder 
that actually, uh, I think the question was made the same, and I'm fearful of a regimented set width arising from that request. I just ask members to consider that part of the attraction of the buffer that's in various widths, and that I agree that may be an absence of it in some parts. But if you had, if you had a mandatory width of buffer, you would you would end up with quite a regimented fixed position. Part of the attraction of the varying big buffer widths is that they have like a semi-natural feel. So um, I, I take the point that members may ask us at the conclusion of the debate to seek improvements to the buffer around the site, but I just want members to be clear. Are members asking for a stated uh, dimension width, or are they allowing some artistic license from the landscapers to provide an attractive landscape edge, and by virtue of that, a semi-naturalised difference in widths um, may may be uh, better, and if that's the way members go, I'd, I'd like like help with that. The um, boundary area. Um, there are probably many parishes that I, I had a friend who, who his house was on two boundaries. We used to go um, to his lounge in Stanbridge, and we used to go to his kitchen in Rochford. If you, you don't you don't have. Um, a, a sort of a, a delineation between communities by, by physical physical boundaries. Um, it sometimes happens that there is a, perhaps a clear mark. Maybe there's a road or a railway line or something between people, but a lot of these parish boundaries relate to church tithes and, and things like that from, from a long time ago. Um, it, it, is, it is every day, Chairman, that particularly in some urban authorities like South End and Lee and places like that where the, where the, the, the town council's boundary and the, the district, they merge and, and you don't know where they are. People <coughs> go about their lives and services and things and they don't know where the boundaries are. They don't need to. It's a little bit different perhaps with districts and cities uh, where there's a bit more of a geographic uh, relationship, Norwich being the extreme, um, which is sort of in the middle of, uh, of nowhere. But I, I think if members are concerned that there should be a, a delineation in this layout up here somewhere where the the roar of the parish boundaries, um, we're putting in a physical division, and I'm not sure what, what purpose. If you want integration, these I think the idea is that people on this development would affiliate to Holbridge for their goods and services, but if they find that they're living in, a, in the parish and paying a preset to the parish, that, that, that's a, a matter to them. I, I get it that these people are on the edge of that parish, but I think it would be a mistake if we're looking to try and draw a boundary through here somewhere, just to separate those those two areas. I mean, from a planning point of view, it would not be um, integrated. Do you have any more, Councillor? Just picking up on that, I didn't actually mean that there should be a boundary. What I'm saying is that if they are in two separate parishes, it's difficult to get that to be integrated. So that, that was the point I was making. I'll move on to um, my next if I may, Madam Chair. Yes, because none um, of the members are raising yeah. questions. <coughs> Paragraph 4.59, page 6.16. Um, this is where um, the Essex Police, uh, they would like to, to um, be involved in the design. Um, and I would like to, I'd like to know whether that can be made a, a, a condition for any future approval that the Essex Police are involved. <coughs> That's on page 616 of the the main report. Um, the next one is the, is the parking, and um, as has already been mentioned, but particularly in the North East Corner, um, there's only 10, where it bounds with house and gardens and ambulance side gardens, there's only 10 visitor, uh, visitor spaces in the location for 25 dwellings. Um, and the danger, or the risk I see here, is that because of the lack of, of parking, perhaps locally to, to the site, they might actually spill out onto existing residential areas, um, which obviously would cause conflict. And what I would say is one of the, one of the biggest um, issues that councillors face is to do the parking. Um, finally, it, it's to, well, sorry, there's two issues. The three-storey buildings has been mentioned in general, but um, there are three, blocks that I'd mentioned, like to mention specifically. They're the, the ones 350 to 358, 383 to 391, and 398 to, three, uh, to, to 400. These are, uh, sorry, 406. 
if you look, they're actually um, very close to each other. And they're actually on the highest point in Holbridge. So from Lower Road, which is roughly at sea level, the, the, the slope the gradient goes up to 20 metres above sea level. And that's over a distance of about 600 metres. So the, as has been said before, the first thing that people will see that will dominate the skyline are the three-storey uh, blocks of flats. And again, as has been mentioned before, this isn't actually in keeping with Holbridge. So what we're doing is we're creating something very unique, but not necessarily something that's actually very uh, attractive. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then uh, finally, um, unit 4.62. If we look at design, this, this is a, a two and a half storey building that uh, butts up to uh, number 18 House of Gardens. Um, and this seems to be contrary to the Essex Design Guide and also to our, our policies, the M1 and the M3. Um, because if you look at it, it dwarfs the existing property um, and is, is actually very close to it. Um, so that's, that's my points. Thank you, Councillor. <coughs> Next member who wants to ask a question is Mrs. Christine Mason. Mrs. Christine Mason. Thank you. Um, before I comment on what is a quite a lengthy report and has been quite a lengthy debate, I'd like to ask three questions of the officers, if I may. The first one relates to the roundabouts. I've seen Mark Francois's letters. I've that I wasn't aware to being superseded, but I, I do have a concern. My experience is such that in when these um, restrictions for a build of 200, in the report it says a build, in the verbal report we were said occupation, and my experience is that that comes under the section 106, and it can be delayed. Now. I would like the officer to advise if there is a more objective method rather than occupation of properties, because that is hard to assess, to determine when that should take place. And also, some care should be given to the time it will take to implement that roundabout. It will be, I would imagine, a matter of weeks, if not months. And therefore, I think of 200 houses having been built, I mean, built, what do they mean? Do they mean airtight? Do they mean watertight? Do they mean occupied? Do they mean foundations? It's not clear. And I think we need a great deal of clarity. And I think going forward, that clarity should be in the conditions because it hasn't been in my experience in the past that it has caused problems in the past. So can that be done? A more, a more specific arrangement for that is my question, Mr. Spanks. Chairman, um, the, you couldn't do that with this application now because all the triggers and the definitions are in the outline uh, planning commission, the agreements to the outline planning commission. Um, to, to help members, I don't know if Mr. Irwin is familiar with it, it may predate him, um, so he, he may not uh, be aware of that. But if it says occupancy, that would be a trigger I would prefer because like the member said if you're dealing with foundations when it has a roof or on drainage connection you know when when do those things happen if you've got somebody who's moved in on a Monday morning that is occupancy that's what we mean by the occupancy so it's quite typical for legal agreements and I'm afraid I haven't got to hand the precise definitions of the one used in this agreement on this outline but if they've used occupancy, I would expect that is when the resident, the affordable housing unit or um, a private sale, they take that occupancy of the building. Thank you. 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 Thank Thank you. The second question we put asked the surface water drainage and the attenu attenuation of ponds. I think other members won't be surprised to know that I'm not in favour of these, I prefer tanking. I am concerned on this side, is in that the pond, the overflow pond, is tapped away. 
And just from a point of safety, water attracts children. Children don't necessarily swim, and ponds tend to get very um, boggy at the bottom. I wonder what safety um, provisions will be made for that area. For the attenuation pond, thank you. Mr. Strange, perhaps no, good to know. Thank you. Chairman, I'm afraid I don't have that uh, detail to hand. Um, but as this is a detailed application, um, I think you could have a condition, if, if, depending on the way the vote goes, and if the event was approving an application, you could, could put a condition on these details or subsequent details, however it goes, um, to. Uh, have that matter as a matter of, of further consideration by way of a planning condition, details for, um, say, boundary fencing, things like this, to the sub schemes um, be provided. The only thing I would, I would be slightly aware of, what normally happens with these subs, they're, they're shallow areas. I know it said you can drown in a cup of tea. Um, but the idea is they are not deep pits, that they, they are depressions in the landscape so that, yes, they fill in periods of excessive rain. But when it's dry, they act as a, as a public open space. So if you've got fences around them, that rather frustrates the uh, you know, ball games or running around or whatever it is that people might want to do, rather detracts from the open. Side. But I do take the point that nobody wishes to see somebody hurting, and it may well be that the applicants can introduce measures that achieve both ends. Now, if you was looking at a planning consent, that this detailed stage, if you didn't feel that was covered in the applicant submission, those measures could be something that you could uh, ask for to be uh, dealt with by way of the condition. Thank you. And Mr. I'm sorry, Mr. Strang, because I'm asking you a lot of questions, but I, I need to be clear before I determine my view on this. Last but not least, on page 6.4, 2.10. It's I, I must have misheard this because you said the play area has been reduced by 15%, and here it says 0.6 hectares, um, and it's gone down to 0.2, which to my mind is a 200% decrease. So am I missing something? Could you clarify that point? Thank you. Chairman, um, I was. Uh, quoting, I believe, from the letter we had today from the Residents Association, I believe the 15% was their calculation that I was advising members with their view in the submission that they made to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. So much information. Right, thank you. Um, the first thing I'd like to say is it's very unusual, in my experience, to see an officer recommendation for deferment. <coughs> it's usually members, if, if at all, and that raises cause for concern in itself that the application is in such um, a situation that the officers have felt the need to do that. Having said that, on all I've seen and heard, I think they've been very kind because the, the, if the information looks like it should be refused. But deferment we have been um, proposed by our officers, and I think our officers have got the ability to hopefully sort this out with board member assistance and developer. But what we might have to consider is that this is a loss of green belt. We know we're losing it, but what we should be seeing is a very good design. We should have the best possible result when we are losing green belt. We shouldn't have what's been described as the off the peg situation that falls short on so many situations. And it does. The lack of pepper potting and the lack of tenure blind is obviously a concern, as been said. And I won't, so I won't go into that strongly. I'm surprised that the officer said that where, when we refer, refer to SPD2, flat roofs, that when there's no strong character existing, but there's nothing existing there. So there is no excuse for a developer to put in flat roofed dormers because they're not complying with anything. The whole design is in their gift. Turning to the report, 
And I'm not going to go through it in detail. I've just highlighted issues. And I'll go through it. Further details. Concerned. Concerned. Should have been. Missed opportunity. Too dense. Causes concern for pedestrian safety. Area is revisited again. Um, lacks passive surveillance. Previously concerned. I mean, there are some positives, don't get me wrong, but they're heavily outweighed by the negatives. And certainly, I would support any move for deferment that gets this application into a state where hopefully it can be looked at in a more positive way. As it stands, it's certainly not acceptable for the loss of green belts that we are experiencing. Thank you. Thank you. I have one more question um, uh, in the that wants to uh, from... Oh, I have two. Right, OK. Councillor John Wilkin, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, the urban design concern, <coughs> would they possibly be uh, addressed by units that were larger or additional housing units coming in? Yeah. Chairman, I think we'd like to give the applicant the opportunity to consider all possibilities. What I can tell you is that one of the thoughts is about changing some of the siting and the form of the buildings, like the uh, gapped frontage here on the present. They would need to either add to that building by perhaps doing like a first floor extension of an undercroft parking to more complete the frontage with attractive articulation, um, which may in turn require a substitution of buildings. So they, they want the opportunity to consider that. But there is also, with all the existing number of dwellings you've got, is to reinforce um, the character. They, they, they want this um, parkland quarter down here, the, the northern quarter up there, and the central core to not only change the materials but the palette and the way they're used and some diversity. So, so I would expect you would see a number of, of, of small solutions that might add up to a far better and greater whole, um, as well as possibly the, the change of some, some buildings. The applicant basically wants the opportunity to go away and think about it. Now they're here listening to your views tonight as well. So they'll have their own ideas. They'll have the ideas of the officers and my colleague to the left. Um, they'll also hear this debate and they'll, they'll make of that what they will and see, I'd like to think they'll see what they can do. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I had two other brief points. It's not that brief because we've got okay. two other speakers and then... Um, um, like a number of other uh, speakers this evening, I'm concerned about the three-storey buildings okay. and also the status of the farmhouse. Is, is that an occupied dwelling? Chairman, um, the farmhouse, when I was up there fairly recently, the farmhouse is unoccupied. It's, it's got like security fencing around it to stop vandalism, etc. As far as I know, the bungalow is occupied. I haven't come there recently, it was a few weeks ago when I was there last. Um, the status of it is, is what they call... Um, thank you. Non-designated um, heritage asset. In days of the it used to be in grade three listed buildings. Okay. Um, so it doesn't have protection. It's not perhaps worthy of protection. It'd be nice to keep if we could. Now, this this development acknowledges that they, they keep the farmhouse, they keep some of the setting of the surroundings, etc. They they could, if they wanted, perhaps knock it over. It'd have been a great shame. They've chose to, to keep that as part of this scheme, um, and I've seen these developers do that elsewhere. Not with houses so nice, but they've kept sometimes a pair of semis on the street frontage that were part of the site, but they've then uh, renovated them and kept them. And that's probably what they'll do here. They'll they'll, they'll look at that building. I believe that they, they, they probably own that, that farmhouse building um, and it's in their uh, ownership so you know it's, it's quite a nice setting for somebody to live to, to live in. So I think we're lucky in this case that there's no plans to demolish it. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> That's not good 
Thank you, Madam <laughs> Chair. Um, got um, one question for um, Mr. Strang. In relation to the uh, revised recommendation um, with regard to deferment, um, basically got two items which is um, listed as, a, as the, the reasoning for the deferment and, and that. Um, now, um, is, it, uh, is it the case that um, when uh, the application comes back to uh, development committee, it, uh, it, will, um, it will only be able to um, discuss matters in relation to those specific particular aspects because they were part of the deferment decision? If that is the case, there's been a number of items which have been brought up in discussion may not necessarily be covered by that. Now, would they need to be added in as additional reasons for deferment so that it much makes it much more broader, broader sort of um, picture? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Madam Chair, just one question. It would definitely be more clinical and accurate if it was were to list us all the matters that they wish to defer. There's several of us up here writing things and I'm sure the applicant could do the same. We would have a meeting and this through. But if members could be absolutely clear as to the matters, assuming those in addition to the officer's recommendation, we've heard talk about um, uh, buffers and uh, things like this. If members could itemise those to help us, give us a shopping list to go back to the applicant. Um, I can't promise delivery on, on all of those because the applicant no doubt will take a view on that. But if we have a, a starting list at least, and the applicants will have heard what we've said tonight, that would be very good to work to. So I would definitely prefer that if members are able to give us a list of the things that they would like us to consider, unless they're saying, you've got the notes, let's see what comes back. Either way, it's workable. It's great if you can list for us um, the items so there is no ambiguity. Okay. Um, one final question from um, Mr. Snapchat. Thank you, Chair. Um, I was going to move for deferment. But what I would, would suggest is that the um, applicant goes away, has a listen to the recording, and picks up on a considerable amount that's been discussed. But picking up on uh, Mr. Strang's point there of the number of things that he would like added to it, can I suggest, Chair, that uh, now I've moved deferment, I'm not sure I've got a second term, but perhaps each councillor in turn with the members, members gives Mr. Shanks a resume of the items that they actually wanted to make sure the one is. Um, if you like, I'll start that for rolling. I'd like to consideration to give them to Mr. Sidney. Excuse me, Mr. Sidney, stop talking out quickly. Please, 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 we're getting sort of close to yeah. Thank you. You ready? You ready? Thank you. Um, I, I would like to start with reconsidering the by the way and the facilities there. The thought that struck me when they were, Mr. Chase was talking about the farmhouse there, it looks like quite a substantial building and it looks like there's some outbuildings there. The thought that struck, struck me was that perhaps some youth facilities could be incorporated within that complex. Um, it seemed a sensible thought to, to me. Um, but, Chairman, I would suggest that each member actually gives Mr. Shanks a little list. So, okay. I hope I've got a second. Okay. I second that proposal. Thank you. Councillor Mr. Strange, please. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
uh, the ward councillors to try and get it sorted out. Thank you very much. Councillor Bob Yeah, I'm a great believer in a really good environmental model. You know, building research establishment and other people that have established this kind of thing. It's, and the, the, the Residents Association report is one of the most professional ones I've ever seen. Yes. And they've done a brilliant yeah. job. So that this cons consultation, this is a brilliant idea, and I have no objections to bridal parts. I think this area is just kind of made for them. It's, 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 it's just, and it, it's such a popular pastime. So if they, if they can give a consideration to that. But also, you want somewhere where it's going to be pleasant, you're going to walk around and you're going to think, give it a wow factor, and it has not got that, this has not got that at all. Thank you. Councillor George I concur with my members here with regards to the points raised this evening, uh, the parish council and also the members from the public. Uh, I will actually be voting for the forum. Thank you. We'll take that Thank you. Councillor I agree with my fellow councillors. Also, we haven't heard too much about trees, shrubs, which are good for the environment and pollution. Perhaps we can look at aspects of the trees as well. On my point, mine would be trees as well. Thank you. Councillor, Mr. Griffin. Oh, sorry, sorry, uh, my main concern is the urban design factor and the room sizes inside the properties themselves. Thank you. Councillor Mason. Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll give you a list of some that I've noted as we've been discussing. I'm, I'm sure that the recording and Mr. Strangs have picked up most of them. But bearing in mind this is going to be hopefully a community, not just a housing estate, it's a, a community for the future. So the three-storey buildings, I think, are unacceptable in principle. There's nothing locally that meets that, so I'll take that consideration. The pepper potting is against our guidelines and is not tenure blind. As has been pointed out, so that's something that needs to be addressed because we're talking about communities. We don't want to involve with them and us situation. And I do understand the demands of selling as opposed to anything else, but we're talking about the future here. Self safety proposal which I would like to see included. Uh, the car dominated layout uh, needs to be reassessed. The amount of visitor parking needs to be addressed. Uh, the inclusion of a skate park needs to be considered. The amenity areas for the blocks, they need to have specific amenity areas and hopefully some drying areas as well. Um, the buffer zones between the development and the existing buildings need to be increased and the space standards, the national space standards, should be looked at as a minimum requirement, not a maximum. Um, those are just a few that I've picked up this evening. I'm Thank sure you. other members will be able to add to it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Mason. You've uh, got most of mine. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, just to, to clarify about the, the green buffer, it's not having a standard size. We can sort of vary, but it should just be a minimum size. That, that, that was my point. Um, also, I'm, I'm keen for um, the police to be involved in this in the design of the site um, so we can get it secured by design. Um, and then oh, I won't go over the, the three stories, um, but unit four six, sorry, 462, which is the 2.5 storey structure um, backing onto 18 Harrison Gardens, and also plot 383, which is a three storey building backing onto Ambleside Gardens. We should look at those in relation to how they fit in um, with existing properties. Thank you. surprise people that I would back um, board involvement um, and my main concerns are around the flooding and the positioning of the three-story buildings. Um, the effort social housing also concerns me um, and I would back the proposal to bring back the right away and introduce cycle paths. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, uh, I would agree with, um, with the items already listed uh, by other councils. Um, the only thing that uh, uh, I thought that maybe uh, might also be mentioned is that uh, as part of the addendum, there was um, an item in there, um, item four, which would come from Mrs. Cat Council on Historic Buildings and Conservation Advice, and that related to um, what was mentioned just recently to do with the uh, farm building, uh, and there were some just suggestions in there about um, how uh, the uh, building surrounding that um, uh, on the plan might be improved to to uh, make that uh, more of a um, a better fit within the overall design, and I think perhaps that needs to be taken into consideration as well. Thank you, members. We've had a good debate. Oh, sorry. Chairman, if I, if I might have around that this. Um, hopefully members did, or hopefully made clear to members about the bridal path. I, I will take that away and ask the applicants, but I, I hope I can uh, let members be absolutely clear that it was only a couple of months ago that members did vote as a committee not to include that bridal path. But I, I would ask for you, um, it, it's, it's the one I worry most that we would be able to deliver on because of that <coughs> mechanism. If I could just say on the skate park, the, the, the legal agreement to the outline commission asked the applicant, obligated the applicant to provide the youth facilities. And there was a number of discussions at the time, various parties, uh, pulling in different directions, etc., and the default position was if they couldn't agree to provide a skate park on the site. Now, I believe the applicants and the parish have had quite extensive discussions about enhancing Paul's Lane with things like outdoor table tennis, um, teen shelters, other things, as well as a, a, a lesser skate park, but a lot better than what the kids have got at the moment, which is a few steel ramps and on bricks sort of thing. You know, I parked next to it and I couldn't see it, the chair. Um, there's been work done by the applicant and the parish uh, with a view to do this, and this is, this is under the framework of, of the agreement to the outline consent. If, if they achieve those negotiations, they're in fulfilment of, of their obligation. Um, it's only if they couldn't agree, then it would have to, by default, be a state park provided on the site. Now, they've gone some way to achieve in other facilities elsewhere in discussions with the parish. Um, so uh, I can't promise that members could expect a skate park to be provided on this site. It was, it was the backstop in the provisions that were being sought. The applicants were given 150 grand's worth of youth facilities to provide and left to see what they come up with, negotiating with various interest groups. If they couldn't agree, the skate park so that was had to be built, one like what they've got in Chelmsford near the, near the Larder. That's how it was costly and assessed. So hopefully that's clear, Chairman. You, you may find that the, the applicant is an advanced stage of um, in negotiating with others, but providing stuff for the community to use at large, but it wouldn't be provided on this site. Thank you. Chairman, do you, do you wish me to formally accept all of those uh, amendments yes, to my please. proposition, which I so do so? And I would just like to add that we're giving the developer here a fantastic opportunity to actually go back and really look at this and come back to us with something that is going to be absolutely fantastic for the community of Hobbit. Thank you. Have we got second? Yeah. Are we happy to defer this? Can I have all um, um, show of hands, please? Thank you. That's carried. Thank you, members. I don't believe so, yeah. Do you have any other matters on that? Well, I'm going to close the meeting at 8. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for taking time.